And that is what to expect with your Octane. Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns. And today I'd like to talk to you about what to expect in your uh, VRX Octane. So I'm gonna open it up, go through it. Let's have a look exactly what you're getting yourself into. Okay, so we take the box out. First thing we're greeted with is the instructions. As nice as they are, we'll put those to the side for the moment. And we'll get to what we came here for, the Octane itself. Really well presented, beautiful beast. Uh, what else have we got here in the box? Should have a transmitter. Yep, here we go. The Flysky GT2 transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz of course. A perfect match for our VRX Octane. Now this, apart from being 2.4 gigahertz, which is the current uh, operating system, if you will, to ensure that it doesn't uh, interfere with any other vehicles or any other vehicles can, can interfere with it. It is operating on a 2.4 gigahertz system and it will be perfectly bound and paired out of the box. Uh, I'll take the cover off here. So first thing we've got to do is put eight double A's in it, which I conveniently have over here. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in because I'm actually going to fire this thing up and go through a few of the adjustments today and check over a few things. Pretty much the basics of what I recommend people do when they get their Octane. Here we go. Put our little battery retainer clip in. These things are really good on batteries. Unless you leave the transmitter on accidentally, this will last for months and months of service. They really don't require any. We'll turn that on, ensure it lights up. Yes, indeed it does. Okay. So we'll talk about these adjustments after, and for now we'll put it to the side. Now, first thing I like to do when, when I get myself uh, an Octane out of the box is take the body off. Now to do that, we've got four body clips here that we'll take off. Here we go, got a beautiful body. It's got a uh, internal skeleton structure, if you will, like a roll cage within. That really adds to the strength and durability of this body, um, beautifully presented. It's got a spare wheel in the back, which is more for looks, but if you do damage any of your other wheels, it is fully uh, usable and serviceable to bolt on the, on the car, should you need to. Detailed drivers for that bit of scale effect. Yeah, pretty cool body. All right, now we'll get the car. The main reason I'm rushing to get into the car is so we can pop it on charge, because we want to go and play with this thing as fast as we can. Now, it's got a really good retaining system here with Velcro straps. Um, and you want to ensure that you do those up nice and firm to ensure that they coat the rough and tumbles and doesn't move around within the holder itself. We've got an 1800 milliamp uh, nickel metal hydride battery here, which is very simplistic, rugged and durable. Excuse me while I open up the instructions, because within here is our charger. Now this is a very simple but rugged and reliable 240 volt charger, which is really handy. Um, it's not necessarily very high amp. Two amp, I'd say, would be the, the rated output. This battery here should charge in an hour or two. So it's very easy to use, it's very reliable. It's exactly what you want for your Octane. And for people who are using it too, it's really safe and easy for kids to use. Very reliable. Okay, so we're going to plug this in and get the battery on charge. Okay, so here we have just our 240, obviously wall plug or extension lead, and the supplied charger. So I'm going to go ahead, plug that in. We've got ourselves a green LED. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Perfect. Means it's on. Also turn green when it's finished charging. We'll plug the battery in. As simple as that. Simple white, white connector that's really hard to plug in backwards. Fairly robust and reliable. You can see here our charge light's gone to orange. That means that it's charging. So we'll set that aside. While I've got the, the instruction books in my hand, I'll talk you through 
exactly what's contained within. Here, we've got ourselves an antenna tube that's come in there. So I'll go ahead and fit that on. It's as simple as sliding it over the antenna and into the sealed receiver box, like so. This little plug here, and this is for rebinding. Now, should you ever get another receiver, another transmitter, or indeed another car, you can fit this in by just plugging it into the plugging it into the receiver and pushing the bind button on the remote. We've got a full detailed instructions of the GT2, all its operations and various adjustments, which we'll talk about a little bit in a second. What else in the instruction manual as a whole? Of course, is for the car. It's a very simplistic, it's got a blow up, it's got tools that you might need to work on it, um, various models, it's got a few adjustments and uh, maintenance precautions, a troubleshooting guide, and of course we've got a full spare parts listing and exploded diagrams. Should you want to upgrade or buy spare parts, they are available and plentiful. Okay, so that's the instructions. Now we'll get to the good part. We've got the battery on charge, we've got the the battery's in the transmitter, now we're going to have a look at the car itself. So the first thing we're going to do is cut this cable tie off. Now that's obviously put in there to arrest the suspension to make sure it fits in the box. I'm going to go ahead and snip that. There we go. Now we can have a look at the full range of motion. Give everything a quick spin over, make sure everything's nice and smooth. You can see here it's got a really unique suspension setup, like a half a half flat chassis with a ladder style, uh, ladder style rear end, which gives it an awesome amount of, of suspension travel and quite robust and somewhat scale as well with the with the live axle, the four-wheel drive system of course. We've got um, alloy shocks on the back, we've got alloy caps on the front ones, fully adjustable for ride height by winding these collars up and down. And you can see here all these, all these holes on this shock tower and in the arm to get different handling characteristics and tuning, tuning options. We've got a, a speed controller here and this is the brush motor version. So of course we've got a simple 540 style brush motor in there, super reliable and super rugged. Okay, now here I've got my nine steps essential toolkit and I'm going to carry out a few basic checks. So first thing I'll do before I even turn a wheel is go over and I'll check that the wheels are tight, which they are. But the last thing you want is a wheel to come off on your first time. Then I'm going to go and get the two mil Allen key and run over a few of the other critical screws within the car. So we've got these ones on the steering post here, really tight. The car's really well constructed, waterproof, or splash proof, I would say, receiver box. Got the motor mount here, it's all tight. Here, got the two and a half mil, double check our shocks, yeah. You can see everything. Nothing on this car has been actually really well assembled. Nothing on it is loose or falling apart. More than critical when you want to take it out of the box. One of the most critical parts that we will look at is this drive shaft here. Check the two screws, two retaining screws, one here. This is one and a half mil, yep, tight. And we've got one right here. Again, one and a half mil, it's quite a small Allen key. Beautiful. While I've got the car upside down, I'm going to have a look over some of the critical chassis screws, bumper bar, suspension blocks, steering posts. Okay. And that is all that's required. So, for the purpose of the video, we'll assume that the battery's been on charge and the light's turned green. This will have enough charge to get it going. I'll unplug the battery. 
going to put it straight in the car with the straps as you can see get it in nice and secure going to go ahead and plug the battery in it does have a power switch on the car too so the power switch is on so i'm going to turn the power switch off plug the battery in that is really good so safety precaution as well I'm going to put these leads under the velcro straps and that's just going to ensure that the wires can't get caught or damaged anything so saves the plug from being pulled excessively in a big accident it's all nice and secure there everything is in okay now i'm going to go ahead and turn the radio on should always turn the transmitter on before the car itself we're going to turn the transmitter to the on position lights are on and we're going to turn the car on i'm going to do this with the car off the ground makes that humming sound to ensure that it is ready to go steering we have throttle we have and reverse we have so i'm going to go ahead now and it's going to have a look at roughly the, the steering trim so that is the direction in which the, the wheels are pointed now that looks to me pretty straight we're not going to find until you get it on the first thing you should do is get it in a nice straight bit of path or or whatever give yourself some space and make sure it's not veering to the left or to the right because if that's so then you've got this adjustment here this first wheel and the steering wheel to indeed change it and you can see how when i twist that wheel that it's actually steering the car ever so slightly so that is our steering alignment put that back straight the second knob here on the controller that is the throttle trim so that again does the same thing with the alignment but it does it with the throttle so that ensures that the car when it's in neutral is not in fact creeping forward or trying to go backwards so we'll get that to a point where we could just hear the motor you can just hear the motor hum a little bit there we go that means it's trying to creep forward and then we'll go back until it stops making that noise again track it for correct operation nice and smooth go backwards perfect now the last adjustment on the transmitter is the steering drill rate now what that does that ensures that we in, in fact have full steering lock on the steering but not too much that we're overloading and binding the servo so we'll put it here to to full lock one way a little bit tricky with one one hand we might actually do the car upside down so you can see overhead so we'll come here overhead make it full lock you can see with me holding the, the steering full to the right the wheel is increasing and in increasing and reducing travel with my adjusting that steer, steering drill rate so we want that up to a maximum without going too far there we go and the other way that is perfect so that ensures and you can see here it's got quite a high quality servo in that it's very very smooth and quite speedy in its operation and given the fact that it's got quite big wheels that's exactly what you need okay so now it's a matter of putting the body back on putting the body back on its body posts reattaching the body clips a little bit hard to do overhead on the bench reattaching the body clips as we took them off and that is what to expect with your octane i'm brett and thanks for watching